Sam uh, from DTE that's going to present to us next. Uh, uh, his perspective from uh, uh, an owner side. Uh, as mentioned, the project that I'm working currently now is for DTE. So we work very closely with MEP, the Mega uh, Enterprise uh, Project. Um, so here's Hassan and here's his presentation. Can you share your screen with us, Hassan? Sure. Um, thank you so much, uh, Hani, for mm -hmm. for your presentation and for your um, introduce us to the to the team. And I'm happy today to be part of from this uh, value discussion. Uh, a few mm -hmm. slides uh, kind of uh, um, present the and like what is the healthy schedule? What is the quality plan? Uh, how to in integrate healthy and uh, quality uh, as schedule and the plan? Because you guys know plan different than schedule. So I, I, it was really a very good topic that Brandon from Paramillo talk about the earned value. I wish we have more time to discuss it and understand the Paramillo um, perspective and how they choose the data. I have a few questions here. I just wrote it down, but you know, time is time. We'll try to leave that to the end. So um, simply, um, my name is Hassam Kafaji. I'm a project control specialist with, specialist with DTE. Uh, I've de been doing the um, um, scheduling and the planning, uh, technique planning since like more than 15 years ago. And uh, I have a master degree from Lawrence Tech uh, in construction and engineering management. Uh, really my content is gonna be, I'm gonna talk about the safety. As you know, DTE have a safety, something like very, very unique and important. And then um, DTE, uh, schedule a process equality, earn value, I, I'm not gonna repeat what, what uh, Brandon said, I'm gonna just give a case study quickly and um, uh, talk about the improve the quality of the plan. And then I have something optional. I would like to talk about It's not an acquire, it's not something, you know, but I love it. I think we should all think about which is BIM and Synchro. Uh, first, uh, safety. Uh, DTE was uh, considered safety is everybody count 200% for the, for the safety. It's everyone responsibility and uh, uh, we kind of set up this this uh, uh, calendar for the safety. I wish, I'm, I'm sure everybody, every, all these contractor and uh, the other people here present their, uh, the GC, they have their own safety process and uh, metric, but that's what we do. We have a, a safety calendar. We discuss it every day before each, before every meeting, which we pick like, for, for instance, today is the 29, the safety word is uh, um, uh, trenching and excavation. And then we discuss it prior to that uh, meeting, just kind of maintain uh, OSHA requirement and my OSHA requirement and, and make sure everybody working safe. And we have classified this, the incident to incident near miss request in black. And these things we, 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 take out, we take care of in every uh, day, probably in all our meetings. And in addition to the job side, people on the, I don't want to spend that much time about, because uh, I know time is essence, but if you have any question about the safety, then we can talk about it. Uh, the first um, topic that I'm talking about the schedule process and deliverable. Uh, when we talk about the, the deliverable, um, it's, uh, we, we mean the KPM, we call it KPM, which is a key project milestone. And um, I took that picture from PM back five, to be honest, um, how to show, we show the, the initiation, the, the project life cycle, as Brandon mentioned. We have to keep this um, uh, present all the time because we are we, we are PMI. We are here as a PMI, so this is our standard. This is our process. DTE always consider the PMI for all their projects and even for the resources. Uh, and we classify the project uh, as a gates and phases, starting from the initiation until the close to close. So that's what we expect in from the contractor to follow the PMI uh, process in terms of um, uh, phases the project and gated, like gate one. We have from, I think from gate one to gate six, each gate means something for us. Like for gate one is initiation, uh, create the business case and then go to two or three, four, five, and then gate six, which is uh, close out the, um, the project. Also, we, we, uh, we maintain the reg, we call it project reg. Um, it's very important to put the, how critical is that a project? Uh, is that, uh, and how, how, how critical, how complex? Based on the cost and, and complexity and resources and cost, 
and all these factors, we put uh, uh, a level to that approach. If it's high rig or moderate or low rig, it depends on how much, or the, it depends on the factor that I mentioned. And uh, MEP specifically, which is part of from uh, DTE, they have, uh, we call it MEP key process, which is a plan, execute, and a close out. And uh, we, we have metric for all these uh, factors, safety, cost, schedule, quality, and customer satisfaction. For example, uh, our safety, we, the metric for our safety is OSHA and my OSHA. We have to comply with these. So it's good to put a safety plan and you try to implement it, but in the same time, you have to have metric to see how, how did you, how, how well you did toward the safety. So my metric is the, uh, is the OSHA. Same thing for the cost. Um, how we measure we are within the cost or how we measure we are doing good in the in term of cost. When you put the cost in the schedule or we put in there for estimate, uh, we measure it by measure the percent of uh, projects behind the budget and all this done by using P6 and earn value um, method. Same thing for the schedule. Uh, we put the schedule and we, we, make, we have to make sure we are um, we, we, we are, uh, have a certain amount of KPMs that be met. For example, if you have six KPMs, which is key project milestone, we need to know how much percentage from this uh, KPM met, like 1%, 2%, we met 90%. For example, last week we have 99% from KPM met. Then you are in, in the, in the, in still in the in good level. And we set up a, a, a control level for that. Uh, same thing for the quality, we, we, we use, we're trying to provide a quality project, a quality a product, but how we measure it, they measure it, it's again, it's percent of defect. Do we have defect? Do we have a change order? Do we have a change request? Do we have a, a change that did not process yet? This defect, we consider it, we, we, we convert it to a percent and see how much a project projects that has this defect, and then we'll, we'll figure out if this is a quality project or not. So the reason why I mentioned this, uh, I think this is good, good, good way to control for, for a big company like the, the people in here, when you have seven, six projects, I'm talking about the platform, you, you, gotta, you gotta control these projects. You see how much defect, how much percent of defect you have, how much is schedule uh, behind in these projects. How many, what, what is the percent? If you have six projects and you have one behind or two behind, give me the person uh, because uh, by the end of the day, we need to present a metric numbers and graphs. Um, here's, I gave, I have an exa example about the quality standard and, uh, and uh, process the quality standard. First, DTE utilize P6 for all their projects. So we, we encourage to the contractor to use P6 to utilize Primavera P6. Doesn't matter what the version is, but as a standard for, for our um, schedule and plan and, 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 and earn value, we use a Primavera P6. And we, yes, we, we, we deal with the um, MSO project in term of contractor. Like when the contractor give us a schedule and MSO project, yes, we're not saying no, but we recommend P6. And we use, we are required for our uh, own use, uh, we're using uh, P6. Measures. Um, measures is to determine a, a successful uh, outcome for deliverable. Like for example, if you, uh, Brandon, Brandon mentioned, that's the phase one deliverable. He mentioned deliverable many times, uh, phase one, phase two, or deliverable the foundation, deliverable site work, deliverable the MEP. So uh, what is the measure for that? We can f finish the project in one year. We can finish the project in six months, for example. We can finish it in two years. So we have to set up a KPM, which is a key project milestone. This milestone is to finish, for example, the site work. So our measurement to determine we are a, have a successful outcome, we put that milestone to finish, for example, the site work, to finish uh, design or to finish um, the construction. We call it construction finish milestone. Uh, without having measures or metric, we cannot tell our outcome is successful because it's not about just complete the work, is about to complete uh, the work on time and <clears throat> on budget, within budget. That's why we're looking for a value on percent of uh, defect. Uh, customer satisfaction is priority and I have something called CI. In DT, we, we, we adopt something we call CI, which is continuous improvement. 
I think this invitation and this meeting is, part, is meant by continuous improvement. What is continuous improvement? We're always looking for opportunity to improve something. Like for example, if you're using earn value using Excel, there's an opportunity to improve and using uh, P6. This is, uh, for, for example, um, um, if you're using a specific technique to update the cost, um, there is, a, like if you put it in, in manually or something, or if you run a report manually, for example, run the report and show data manually, there is another way to, to automate the reports using Buffett table, not regular, for example, Excel. For example, I've seen some people using Power BI to make a dashboard. So there is always opportunity to uh, improve the process and that's what we call it CI. And we give a certificate for that, uh, for everyone who make improvement. So I encourage everyone to look to this terminology and make sure um, you guys can apply it. Um, I, I sorry, I'm working quickly because I'm talking fastly because I wanna I don't wanna uh, get Hani um, upset Hani because he's he's looking to the to the time and I appreciate that. Uh, here's the earn value. Uh, what I'm trying to talk about the earn value. Here's a GRP earn value case study. What is GRP? GRP it's a gas renewable program. This is a program um, like 15 or 20 years. It's being gonna it's gonna be continued until 2035. I mentioned this project since more than three years. And what is that means? Uh, we are replacing the gas main for all Southeast Michigan and uh, um, Grand Rapids, which is up north. So um, we replace the main and, uh, and the main headers for the gas and then uh, go deeper to the main inside the streets, roads, avenues, and stuff like that. And then we renew the services that help the customer, that serve the customer, the community. It's a huge program. It's about uh, 200 miles per year. Um, the cost, it's huge, about 200 million or, I don't wanna go get into the, that number. It's a, it's a big amount. We spend 20 million a month, you know, for this program. Uh, also, it's, um, it's, it's gonna be extended to 2035. The goal to finish to 2035, install a new main, install a new services, gas it up, and then we're gonna abandon the old one because we cannot leave the old one live or you know with leak or stuff like. We make sure the old one is abandoned and and secured, cut and cup. So uh, I we utilize the earn value in P6 in, in the budgeted unit. We don't use it for cost only. For example, here's like um, for, let us take Detroit. City is a big city. We divide Detroit for four, five, six green, uh, zones or area. I would call it grids. And for example, let us take uh, Detroit, West Detroit. We're gonna replace for this year, 20 miles. And again, we're gonna serve about uh, 2,500 uh, customer or service or address. And then we're gonna abandon about 50 or 100 miles. And then uh, what is what I put in P6, I put a budget in the neighbor budgeted unit as a, as a unit, as a budgeted. And then I upload a resource to that schedule and then uh, I, I use the earn value to calculate cumulative year to date install versus cumulative plan gas main install. Also, I went even narrow to calculate cumulative weekly main install and cumulative weekly target install. Target means the baseline. And then if you look to the, to the right, you will see the uh, even per day to see the productivity per day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and in, term of, in case of there is a, a weekend, we can add it as well. So if you look to this year to date install, and then we have a current budgeted unit. And then when I export to that P6, this is how I export it. I've done it, everything's done in, 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 in P6. And then I export it to Excel to show, um, because Excel is easy to navigate for by everyone and it's accessible and no need license or stuff like that. And you can use the Bevit table to kind of display uh, the, um, uh, the, the data. For example, uh, this is North Center Detroit 3 I've seen. We have like uh, year to date install 135. And then this week we install 1700. And then there is a hidden tables for the target, which is the baseline, how much we budgeted. So, um, Earn value management can use for the, to measure the cost, uh, which is SPI and CPI and index, 
but I rarely seen uh, people using it to present the quantity budgeted unit like non labor budget unit or labor unit. I utilize it uh, to use it to present how much I earn every day from gas because I have a target. I have like I, as I said, two hundred thousand mile two hundred thousand mile per year for this grid or for North Central Detroit fee. I gotta make for example forty mile this year. How much I should earn to make this goal? Because there is no way you can delay. People, gas is gas. People need gas every day. You cannot just delay one day. Uh, we are working day by day. So, uh, so um, sorry about that for distracting. My daughter just was calling me, sorry. So uh, um, that's how I put it in P6 and then export it to Excel. And then uh, from Excel, I use it as a use it pivot table. Sometimes I use a Power, uh, Power BI to present the data and make a graphs. Uh, easy for the customer, easy for the client, easy for the uh, executive to review it quickly. From one click, you can tell how much I earn versus the plan. Um, um, here's something that it's, I, 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 I'm not using it right now in DTE, uh, and it's not required by DTE. This is like, <laughs> don't consider it uh, like an announcement. It just, for me, I like it. It's uh, using BIM. Uh, interactive 3D models always, for me, is helpful. As a scheduler, as a controller, uh, as a client, I would like, I, I, would, I would love to see people using it because it's gonna give you a virtual work through. Uh, it's gonna um, have a cost saving, a great work plan, and also it will improve the productivity. If you ask me how, I will give you a quick example. I don't know if I'm running uh, too much, I have a project with, uh, I used to work to Wallabridge and I love Wallabridge, by the way. By the way. Um, it's my second family and uh, after DTE. Um, and uh, um, we had a project with, with Ford. It's the biggest central energy plant. And there is uh, so many, uh, if you look at this, I, I just took examples, quick example from the underground utility. All these colors present different uh, utility. Like uh, this one I remember is Dark Bank, the purple, this one electrical, this one water, some uh, geothermal, some gas line coming to the CHP and CEP. Uh, there is, and, and, and they are in different level, minus zero to minus three. Uh, this one in minus G, three to minus five, the purple from my, level minus five to minus and so on. So when I get to put the schedule, they ask me as a senior schedule, I wanna put the plan to the field. I have to put all these underground utility up front before even they put after the pile come, uh, before the pile come. Um, but I face a problem. We have a, um, I remember John Green for electrical, motor city, uh, for mechanical. I have a motor city for electrical. I remember the blaze for excavation or someone. So what I figured out when I reviewed the drone, these people are gonna conflict it while they are excavating. For example, um, um, gas line is gonna be very deep. Water line is not gonna be that much deep. Um, geothermal pipe is gonna be very, very deep. So what's happened, uh, what I felt, people, they're gonna excavate and backfill. And then the duck bank have the same, uh, have the same, uh, have duck bank the same level. He gonna re-excavate one more time. So to avoid, uh, double excavation by each contractor. I requested a BIM and cross section and a 3D model cross section that shows me each these of utility, not in the set, physical set structure, in the, in the section in 3D model, each level how much, which, like for example, in level zero, minus, minus five, for example, what I have, do I have utility? Do I have water? Do I have geothermal? Do I have deck bank in this level? So I can put, for example, uh, uh, the schedule based on the level approach. Um, I'm gonna put in the schedule, uh, for example, uh, in nine first, we're gonna excavate for that bank. We're gonna excavate, we're gonna install, uh, for example, water line or sewer line at the same time, because we need to backfill one time. Without having BIM, how can I know the, the, the level of excavation in, 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 in virtual way? And in addition, uh, I used it to schedule the, the MAP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing as well. Uh, because, you know, we have firefighting, we have lodger, uh, 
yeah, chill water. We have low, low, low and high chill water. We have, um, I remember, duck work, air duck work. All these uh, above, above the ground or all these overhead utilities are going to be conflicted. So, and then if in order for me to put the schedule, who starts first, is, it was easy for me to request it from the engineering to give me a 3D model. I, I remember they use Navis work or something. Kind of show me in each level, in each stage, uh, which kind of utility that I should start or put in order for me to give it to the superintendent, to the people in the field, so they can uh, uh, make the plan work instead of conflict and uh, avoid rework and stop work, stop work. Um, yeah, that's what well, I, that, I- That's actually what we're gonna present at the end of the program is we have a BIM a, a modeler that she uses uh, Synchro and the Navis work uh, for doing sequence of projects. Yeah. 3D model, Synchro is a 3D model schedule. I think so this I is have, another I great idea. For you. So all this thing uh, that you described about project control, uh, it happens in MEP and the way that you control your projects is you have a scheduler from your department that goes into these projects and assists the project manager. Is that is that how it's done? Yes, okay, exactly. For every that. project. Okay. Yeah. So because um, I know P in the DTE is very big on PMI and they're one of our major sponsors for PMI GLC. And I know that they make it a requirement for their project manager. Yes, to become they, want, they won't hire any PM without there. having a PMI <laughs> exactly. certificate. So to be honest, you're I not love, being a I project manager for doing unless that you, are, you, are, you, are, you are a PMI or PMP. Exactly. To be honest, I, don't sorry for require that. that. Yeah. People, yeah, people don't do it. And we have a lot of DTE people. Actually, our uh, event manager, Shalom, is also from DTE. And we have Ben Cohen, who is one of our uh, uh, biggest fans, and he's, he's one of one of our biggest contributors. He's from DTE, so uh, we love working with DTE and clients like DTE, and we appreciate all the efforts that you have. I know you guys are very big on safety. Uh, I, I've met your CI um, uh, directors and managers; they, they visit our sites uh, very often. And I hope to see more uh, of your contributions, especially in project controls, uh, into our projects in the future. Thank you very much, Hassan. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank uh, you so much for everyone. Thank you. I appreciate it.